All right, well, it is blowing 20 miles an hour onshore. It's freezing out. There are beautiful clouds though today. Um, and I think there's a little cove that's protected from the northwest wind. So anyway, I'm loading up my pallet in the car here and then I'm gonna hike down there and hope for the best. Since my pallet is kind of like a, a box type pallet, uh, and I paint pretty frequently. I don't have to like freshen up my paint all the time. In fact, things like yellow, uh, this cad yellow medium, this lasts like a long time. Uh, same with this cad yellow lemon. Um, also colors like alizarin crimson doesn't seem to dry out at all. I mean, it lasts probably weeks. Same with dioxazine purple, uh, but ultramarine blue tends to dry up pretty quickly. So does titanium white. Um, what else? Uh, yellow ochre dries up pretty quickly. So does uh, burnt sienna, and and also cadmium uh, red light. Now we've pretty much gone through my whole palette here. This was just some extra paint that I had uh, from a painting I was doing, a big commission I was doing, sort of like a sand color. Instead of throwing it away, I just like put it on my palette. And this is a spot I'd actually like to come back and paint when it's not so windy. Um, there's just a moment between gusts here, so I thought I'd show you, but you can see how like churned up the ocean is, big waves, lots of wind. Um, but on the other side of this point, um, there's like some wind protection, so I'm gonna head down there. Um, this is a beautiful time of year, but I mean, as far as like flowers blooming and all that, and not, like nice clouds and stuff, but it's just spring in the Bay Area, definitely the coldest time of the, of the year and the most difficult for plein air painting. All right, so I want to incorporate the clouds and there are some interesting elements in the rocks as well. Uh, so as usual, I'm going to be moving things around to make an interesting composition. The other thing too is there's not a lot of color right now, um, but when the sun does come out, uh, there is a bit more color. Like you can see now on the distant hills, it's a bit more green now that there's a bit of a break in the clouds. So uh, today's just going to be a fun day playing around and trying to make the most of whatever the day offers, you know, as far as visual information. All right, so I'm working on a 16 by 20 today, and here is the compositional idea. As I mentioned, I move things around, like um, these, this sort of rock formation here is in the distance. I've sort of moved that to the left, and then I've just used the rocks and cliffs on the left side here just as raw materials. I'd like to have some of these rocks in the foreground, so I've got, you know, got them right here. A little bit of the shoreline, so there's some foreground, midground, and then distance, and then of course the clouds. And I'm just looking for interesting patterns. I'd like to include some of the really dark blue around the clouds. Um, you know, have them like sort of a, an ultramarine down towards more of a cerulean. All right, so first I'm gonna mix up some darks here and I'm trying to decide what color to go uh, with for the darks. I like to get color in my darks if possible, but honestly today they do look black almost uh, so I think I might just go with that all right so I'm going with ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna which is sort of the closest color I have to black on my palette and this is still a transparent color and as you can see when it becomes transparent there is still a touch of red in there which I think actually uh, will be a good thing and I'm thinning with liquid as well I am squinting at the subject and just looking for simple shapes. And this brush is fairly large for what I'm doing here. It's a natural bristle. I don't have a lot of control with it, which is, is good. I, that's, I don't want to be too careful. Um, 
so I just want to establish my dark pattern here. Some of these rocks that are in the distance, you know, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna change the value, possibly lighten them up a bit, uh, you know, to create some atmospheric perspective. But for now, I just uh, you know, the, these darks are going to sort of be the anchor of the composition. So I want to make sure that I get these uh, established first and then I can decide, you know, if I need to move them or, uh, you know, what needs to happen in order to, to improve the composition or make sure the composition is working. I mean, this is actually really an enjoyable process here. And pardon me if the camera's going all over the place, I'm like hand holding it and trying to paint a little behind the scenes info on how this gets done. Uh, you know, we're running a lean operation here, no crew. So forgive me if I'm not getting everything, but. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And now I need to, you know, sort of work on these rocks here. And I want to include some of the intricacy or some of the interesting shapes here. Uh, and then I'll incorporate a nice white water pattern as well. All right, so I'm happy with where the uh, darks are for the moment. Uh, I want to focus on the sky and I've just sort of sketched out, you know, a random pattern for the clouds. And as I mentioned, I want to go uh, from darker blue to a lighter blue, you know, more of an ultramarine towards a cerulean. This blue right here is titanium white ultramarine with a touch of phthalo blue. And this one is just phthalo blue, titanium white with a touch of cadmium yellow lemon. You know, up high, the sky will be this color, and then as it gets closer to the horizon, have more yellow in it. And this part is just like, you know, doing an abstract painting. So I want to just paint quickly and, you know, try to find a pattern that looks appealing to me. I think one of the things we can often forget is is that <laughs> painting should is fun. I mean, it's challenging, but there, you know, I always feel like there should be an element of play in what you're doing. Um, you know, kind of remember back to when you were a kid doing things, not putting pressure on yourself to actually necessarily do a great painting, but to enjoy the process of just kind of exploring and experimenting. Um, just so much more enjoyable to do it that way. Okay, so the painting is pretty much roughed in at this point. And uh, as I've mentioned in the past, it, what I'm trying to do is just, you know, approximate colors and values. And I'm just generalizing. So like for, the, like for these hills here, it's just sort of a dull green here, a dull blue for these hills in the distance. And then just trying to work out a, you know, an interesting cloud pattern. So, you know, my primary concern is to maintain a good composition. It's really all about design. Um, and then, you know, from here on out, I'm gonna come in and work within these shapes, but I don't wanna break up the overall design. All right, so I've mixed up a color for the dark portion of the clouds and I'm using ultramarine with a touch of burnt sienna to gray it down and of course, titanium white. And I'm really trying to be conscious 
of the value here um, because it's really easy to make your clouds too dark. So I want to keep this, you know, even though this is a dark portion of the clouds, I want to keep it pretty light. That's the, one of the most difficult things about the sky is it just, you know, when we're staring at it and looking at, at the details, uh, you know, we'll, we'll think that the darker portions are darker than they are um, because we're staring at them. Um, and then oftentimes I'll get it, you know, I'll get the painting home and I'll just think, this sky just seems too heavy and not airy enough and open enough. You know, I've learned from experience to be conscious of the values. And I may need to even lighten them up more. I mean, obviously there'll be some transitions to the lightest portion of the cloud. But uh, the other thing too is like, I would often put too much color or too much purple in the dark portions of the clouds, but they're really, usually they're very gray. So I may be pushing the blue a little bit, but I am trying to keep them, keep them gray so that the blue portions of the sky will show up as blue. No, yeah, take a look. Sure. Oh wow, fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's got the one protected spot on the coast here. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we come here. It's, it's nice. I know, it's like so up the top of the stairs, it's brutal. I know. There's no way we could do what we're doing here today anywhere else along the coast. Yeah. There's just nowhere. All right, so I want to start lightening some of the values. Uh, and I'm gonna add a variety of color too. So I'm mixing up some titanium white with a touch of uh, alizarin crimson and just looking for areas of light. But again, I wanna keep, make sure that I don't, you know, that the, the pattern doesn't become too distracting. So I wanna keep the value shifts pretty delicate. Also sort of playing around with varying the brush strokes. All right, and then for the light portion of the clouds, I'm going with titanium white with a touch of cadmium yellow medium. These are my lightest lights here, so I can key the, the blue of the sky to those lightest lights. Uh, as you can see, the, the blue of the sky is quite a bit darker. And I wanna leave some of the orange of the, you know, of the tone showing through, and then also some of the sketch even. Alright, so here's what I finished up with. Uh, I'd say the biggest challenge was making sure that the uh, clouds were light enough. As I mentioned, oftentimes I'll make the dark portion of the clouds too dark and sometimes also make them too purple. I focused on making them gray so that they would stand out against the blue of the sky. I had to lighten these distant hills here to push them back and added more blue to them as well. I did have to put some saturated green on the top of these cliffs here to separate them from the ones in the distance. Um, I definitely pushed the red in these cliffs here. 
I did look for, you know, sky reflections on the top of the water. So I first established the green of the water using sort of a, you know, kind of a dark aqua green and then came on top of it with sky reflections. This was waiting on my porch when I got home. You can never have too many flannels. So it's lined with this fake fur so it'll keep me nice and warm <laughs> with these crazy northwest winds. One thing I want to mention is that uh, I feel like certain compositions would benefit from a larger size, especially something like this particular composition where it's like a distant view. Um, I feel like this could be maybe in the like 24 by 30 range, uh, 24 by 30 range, or maybe even bigger. I have hiccups. I've had them for like 45 minutes. It's driving me crazy. All right. So as usual, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos and a materials list, that sort of thing. And like I said, it really helps support the channel. So link below. Also, I am in a show, a group show at Studio Gallery called Terrain. Uh, it's landscape, seascape show. Um, so I'll put a link down below to that show too, in case you want to check out the work. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.